Thank you for the floor. Uh, it's an honor to be here with uh, such uh, distinguished uh, speakers and a very important topic today. Uh, I am from uh, the Ministry of uh, Justice and we are uh, working very hard in Norway for preventing uh, uh, radicalization. And we have also uh, uh, attacked the uh, radicalization by uh, having new ideas of how we can uh, defeat this. And I think uh, the main uh, thing we are thinking about, the main method we are thinking about this, is to uh, defeat the radicalization by doing preventable uh, measures. Because we think that radicalization is not nothing like people decide, oh, today I'm going to be a bad man. I think it's a slow progress. And we have to have measures that stop the progress in the beginning, and not only focusing on the end, when it's often too late. So, we have, uh, in Norway, we have an action plan with uh, 30 measures. And uh, a lot of those measures is not, uh, it's on a municipal level. And that is very important, I'm going to speak uh, a lot about that later. Um, Uh, I think um, for a little bit, uh, the, the, the action plan and to do this uh, measure is very important for, for the government. And as I spoke, uh, the prevention efforts, uh, we think that is the key element to ensure uh, fundamental values such as democracy, human rights and security. Uh, we often say that we do the, the municipal levels uh, measures. That's it's very important uh, to prevent people from being, for example, a foreign fighter. But we do face also the fact that Norway and a lot of other countries in, in uh, Nordic countries and Europe, actually, there is a lot of people who have become uh, foreign fighters from our countries. And we also, in the same time, the time as we have uh, concrete measures on, on, the, on the prevention, we also need uh, measures uh, uh, on uh, those people who have actually gone uh, to, for example, Syria and Iraq, who uh, has become a foreign fighter. And I think it's very important that we send a clear message out that uh, Norway is never going to be a safe haven for terrorists. So the people was gone and fight along the side of ISIS or Daesh or other um, groups that we think, uh, or which we have clear evidence for, have done a serious violation to the uh, innocent people of Iraq and Syria, we will never tolerate that. Because a life in Syria, a life in Iraq, has the same value as a life in Norway. So we have to face criminal action with prosecution. And we do have laws in Norway to do that. Because in, according to Norwegian law, it's the same type of criminal, uh, it's the same type of penalty for uh, doing, for example, homicide or uh, raping in foreign countries as you do it in, in Norway. The crime against humanity uh, will never be accepted in Norway. But of course, uh, our resources is, uh, is used not only on, on the police and the prosecution system, it's also used in, in the local municipal levels. And I, I think that is uh, what is making uh, 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 Norway a little bit special on. Uh, on uh, on the work against radicalization compared to many other countries. Um, in the action plan, uh, the whole idea was to, call, uh, to, to, to collect every measures we do to fight radicalization into one action plan. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, ministries who is involved in this. So we are thinking to have the whole uh, holistic uh, perspective on this uh, uh, topic. And I think that is very important because we don't, this is not only a task for the justice uh, ministry, this is also a, a challenge uh, for, for the schools, this is a challenge for the culture, this is a challenge for the municipals. 
So uh, we have uh, been uh, given a lot of uh, international uh, uh, recognition because of uh, this holistic uh, perspective when we are uh, facing the radicalization uh, uh, defeating. This is not a this is not a hierarchy hierarchy uh, hierarchy. Uh, this is uh, just um, um, to show you uh, how how the action plan is actually working in, in practice. Uh, at the early prevention phase, and this is maybe the most important areas. In in all, we have thousands of people employed in the municipals. These are uh, these uh, employees are the ones facing. Uh, the youths and every kind of people in their uh, home uh, areas every day. The teachers, uh, the people working in the social welfare system, the people working in the health system. Those are the people who have contact with people every day. So for us, it was very important to engage the municipals uh, to uh, join this um, this action plan for uh, fighting uh, radicalization. And I have to say that in Norway, there has been a great enthusiasm from the municipals. Drammen is a very good example. We've taken this very, very serious. Oslo has a long-term program for uh, having prevention on, uh, on crime and uh, have long-term success. And the most in interesting part is that a lot of uh, municipals, they have just like used the same methods to fight radicalization as they have used the same methods uh, for uh, fighting uh, crimes against youth. And I have an example uh, from my youth. I, I grew up in, uh, in Norway in, uh, in a small place called uh, Ferrana. If you have never heard about it, it's the most beautiful place, of course, in the world. Uh, but uh, the, the, the local police there came into our classroom when we went to high school. And they told us about the consequences of uh, using drugs and using alcohol and doing the crime. Uh, well, what kind of crime did we talk about? Well, it was like... Uh, trimming uh, a motorcycle, a small motorcycle. It's not a very serious crime, but uh, that was the kind of crime we could do in uh, the small place where I come from. Uh, but today, they're using the same kind of methods. The police is coming into the classroom, trying to tell the kids, what is the consequences? And not the least, in, in, in front of the uh, foreign fighters, it's very important to tell uh, the youth but being a foreign fighter is not like uh, the, the, rem uh, the romance, uh, romance uh, picture you've been given from uh, Dash on the internet. It's a real war. In a, in a war, people are suffering. And in a war, everybody gets uh, damaged. Not just uh, the one who is uh, afflicted from the crimes, but also those who do the crimes. Because I think everybody who has been a veteran in the war is having some kind of struggles after. So uh, uh, the system is like the local police is uh, working together with the municipals and uh, the report is very good on this. We often uh, speak about um, Muslims when it comes to fighting terrorism. But the perspective in this action plan is not only Muslims. Because we don't think that uh, the Muslims in themselves is a risk. We think the one or two single persons who not be interpreted uh, the religion in the right way is the problem. And we have clear evidence for that in Norway. The worst terrorist in Norway, Anders Bering Breivik, he claimed to be a Christian terrorist. There is no one in Norway who recognizes him as a Christian terrorist. And I think it's very important to have that kind of perspective. But of course, maybe the motivation is religiously. And that is also why it is so important to engage the civil society, to engage the imams and so on, to help us give the right ideas to the young. 
And I think the response from the Muslim society has been very, very good. We are very happy about it. We also have the focus on right-wing extremism. We have the focus on left-wing extremism. We see that the pattern for a youth to become a radical, a radical person is, is very similar. Either you become a right-wing, left-wing, or you become a religion uh, radical uh, person. This is, a, this is a dynamic action plan. We are trying to update it when we have new information. We have a lot of research programs going on because we need more facts. We need more facts about the pattern. How do a young person go the steps from being maybe a lone person in the society, maybe an unhappy person, to become a radical person who leaves Norway, for example, to fight innocent lives in Syria. And it's not only a person from uh, minorities in Norway who's gone to Syria. Ethnical Norwegian has left small society on the, on the village side in Norway. And that is a big question for us. How could that happen? And never been into the Middle East before. So there's a lot of things we have to uh, do real research on to find answer, and when we have the answer, we're going to update the action plan as well. We have uh, made a national guidance for uh, prevention uh, of radicalization, and it was uh, published in uh, April 2015. This is a, it's a guidance plan for the local uh, employees in the municipal, it's a guidance plan for the, uh, the employees in the police, we hope that uh, in every kind of society, also the civil society, they use this kind of action plan every day. And I think the, the key word here is, is the care. Is the care about what's happening around you. And if everybody do that, maybe we'll become, uh, uh, get, uh, uh, get uh, the signals from a young person who don't, don't have a really good time. And uh, maybe the municipals can be able to uh, to help him instead of him uh, being more and more isolated and going to internet and be radical, say, and radically stated instead of, for example, get uh, into work or get a better following up on, at the school. And not the least, uh, we have a very strong uh, culture in Norway for uh, using uh, the sports activities, uh, the sports clubs, and so on. And we're also trying to engage the, the civil society on in that way. Um, following up, we are, we are working on every kind of measures now. Uh, I think uh, the action plan, uh, as it was made with the 30 measures, is uh, now we are, we are good and uh, we, we are uh, having good progress about uh, completing the 30 measures. But as I say, this is not a plan that has an end date because we think this is a, it's a work that is still going to be keep going on. So, that is a, a, a short presentation about uh, the government's uh, action plan and I uh, hope you have some uh, really good uh, discussions here today and uh, thank you for the floor again. Thank you very much.